This is Mark from Shell Mark Sales again, also known as SM Postcards. So in this video, I'm going to go over a couple things. The first thing I'll go over is the normal what's sold on eBay, Etsy, and HIP postcards. Then I'm going to do a little exercise on how I track my financial data across three different sites selling postcards and explain a little bit of the mess I got myself into in the beginning and too much work and how I resolved that to save me a lot of time. Then there's a term, a postcard term that I'll go over later in the video and also another premier sneak preview of a short video that we got published, uh, ready to be published in the future. So let's go ahead and get started. We sold 18 cards on eBay, we sold zero cards on Etsy, and zero cards on HIP. So in the last video was the same thing. We sold everything on eBay, but nothing on uh, Etsy or HIP. So they struck out. Now normally our business is 80% of the cards sell on eBay, 15% on Etsy, 5% on HIP. So over time it will average out to that every month around those numbers. Uh, even if we have some dips in some, but eBay always always is the bulk of the sales. So let's go ahead and get started with the first uh, card. Like I said, we got 18 cards to go through. This will give you a good variety. The main goal of doing this is so you see what variety of cards sell. I get a lot of questions about what types of cards sell, uh, etc. And these videos should give you a good idea of what to look for when you go out looking for postcards. So the first one is a postcard. It's a Chrome postcard of Reading, Pennsylvania. It's basically really what it is. It's just a top view over Reading, Pennsylvania. It's a nice Chrome card, square corners, unposted. And that view there kind of leads into the term that I'm gonna get into later on in the video for the postcard term what that type of view is called or has been called. It's been called a few few different things. This card sold for $4.45 full price and it's being shipped to Ephrata, Pennsylvania. Now the next card that sold, I, I'm gonna have a hard time with this name, but it's uh an Israel Emmanuel Synagogue Kuroko. It is basically a chrome card. It's got some bleeding from the writing on the back. And the stamp but it's still sold it's posted 1978 but it looks like a synagogue right there it's a chrome card this card sold for 445 and it's being shipped to Staten Island New York the next card is not a postcard it's actually a trade card a trading card and I'm experimenting those with the in the postcard store I went out and bought a bunch of trading cards and this is the, the garbage pail kids 1987 series it's half-baked Betty you can see her with the rolling pin on there. This is a later version, 1987. And this would normally be shipped with the eBay standard envelope, but it's actually going to the United Kingdom, so it's going to go and uh, package up for First Class International over there. This card sold for $4.95 and is going to go over to the United Kingdom. But I'm experimenting with some of the trading cards, and so far I've had pretty good luck. I've gotten my money back for all the trading cards I bought, so now we're starting to get into profit and see what sells. And in the near future, we'll be going out looking for some more lots of trading cards to put up. Now, I don't list a lot every day of those. I do about 10 a day on the average of trading cards because I'm just experimenting with them. But so far, so good. Next card that sold was St. Thomas the west end of island showing the airport. So let's see if I can get that in the right orientation. So there's the island and there's the airport right back there. So this is a Caribbean island just like Puerto Rico. I kind of seek out any Caribbean island cards. You know they sell for regular money but they they there are a steady seller. This is a nice chrome card. It's not posted. The corners and everything. This was a well-kept card. Uh, for the St. Thomas area. This sold for $4.45 and it's being shipped to Chicago, Illinois. So there was no offer on this card. They paid full price for the Chrome card. The card that sold is Prune, Orchard, and Blossom. And this is in California. And it's just a Chrome card of some Prune, Orchard, and Blossom there. As you can see, it's a nice shiny, clear card. Unposted Chrome card. 
on there. This was actually purchased for $4.45 full price and it's being shipped to Minneapolis, Minnesota. So far, like I said, the goal of doing what's sold, so you can see the variety of different cards that sold, we've done a lot of chromes, posted and unposted chrome cards, and we did a trading card. As we get going, you're gonna see some linens, some older chrome cards, but mostly today, you're gonna see a lot of chrome cards. So, it gives you an idea of what to look for when you go out to the antique mall, just searching through some cards, or wanting to buy a lot. You know, if you see a lot of these cards in there, you know, I, they might sell and they just won't sit. Not saying that they would sell, but most of them, everything sells. And in just a few minutes, I'll go, I'll go ahead and get into the financial tracking and how I got myself out of my mess I created. Next purchase we have is from Linda. She bought two cards. Now this is where the titles probably came into play here. Both of these cards are of the Jewel Box in Forest Park, St. Louis, Missouri. The first one is a linen card. Right there shows you the jewel box, which is like a flower or park, uh, part of the park there, and it's unposted linen card. And then she also bought, on another order, she bought the jewel po um, box, Forest Park there. So in the search that she probably did on eBay, or she might have a safe search, jewel box, Forest Park, St. Louis, Missouri, probably triggered those safe searches. So instead of just one card, I was able to sell two of my cards popped up and she purchased both of those. One's a linen and one's a chrome. One's posted, one's not. So this is, uh, both of these cards were bought for full price, $4.45 free shipping, and they're being sent to St. Louis, Missouri. So Linda, thank you, and you probably live in St. Louis. Two more cards, and then I'll get into the exercise on how I track the financial data and the mess I got myself into it. So the next card that sold is the Restored Moore House Interior, Williamsburg, Virginia. Just like Fredericksburg I said in the last video, sometimes I question if I should really list these cards since they're so mass produced and it's a historical site souvenir. But every time I do list them, they sell. So this is a nice parlor, you know, a stage photo of the museum there in Williamsburg of the Restored Moore House. Unposted card. You can see the little guy up there. That I usually see that with the, you know, a series on there, but really nice card. It sold for four dollars, so it was an offer to a buyer, and it is being shipped in New York, New York. Now this card that sold is one of the neater cards for today. There's another one in the stack that I thought was pretty cool. It's the Pan Am building, uh, actually located in New York City. It's a chrome card. It's an uh, posted, probably didn't. I can't really tell. But that says Pan Am right, right on the top up there, uh, chrome card. It is posted and written on. Now this card did have a blemish up at the top. If you see up there, there is some color peel right on the top of the card um, with that. So with these vintage cards, you will get some of that. But it really doesn't take the value down too much when you're selling them at the price I do. And it's a chrome card. But somebody, uh, the Pan Am stuff is uh, sells pretty good. I don't really price it up that much unless they're airplanes or a, just a view of an airplane or Pan Am, like stewardess coming off a plane or something like that. But th I thought this was pretty cool. <clears throat> this actually sold for $4.45 uh, full price. It's being shipped in New York, New York. As you can see, there was a lot of postcards that we just went through that sold, and they're all different things. They're linens, or chromes, or older ones, or buildings, or trees, or parks. So the key words is what's selling those, I believe. And I'm doing, doing a video, I'm still doing some analysis, some test I'm doing. I'm letting them soak and get ingested. Uh, but I'm pretty sure that's what's doing it is the key words and people wanting to get things that they've been to or whatever. But let's go ahead and get into the exercise of tracking financials. I got a lot of questions. How do you track financials across three different sites? Now with our business, we have a lot of other things too instead of just postcards. We have you know, toys, pre-orders, um, different things, but we won't get into that. This is basically about the three postcard stores. So we have three sites. We have one SM Postcards on eBay, SM Postcards on Etsy, and SM Postcards on Hip. Each site has different fees and structures. You know, eBay has managed payment, Etsy doesn't have a store fee. You, you create a listing for 20 cents and it's good for four months. Hip postcards is probably the easiest fee structure. They just use PayPal. They don't, and there is a store charge. 
So everyone's a little different. So in the beginning, what I tried, I used a spreadsheet and did it myself. I have the background. I have 30 years experience in the technical field of programming, coding, computers, phones, technical management. So I can do this. I can write in Excel. I can create spreadsheets and you know I said I'm gonna put this together this is gonna be great so I created a spreadsheet for each site I researched the fees and charges and credits I was the master of knowing all I thought I manually entered in all the sales and charges I was doing electronic ledgers I was every time something sell I knew exactly what I had and then I found some files, some CSV files that I could download and import the data, but I had to massage it. Honestly, I hated it. It got, it grew into a monster. It, I should have known better from my experience, but I just kept adding to it. I had so much time into it. I just ended up hating it. So this is the monster that we created here. It basically had 20 spreadsheets, roughly, workbooks to manage. Formulas here, this linking here, that. I mean, I had some complex plex stuff going on here. You know, sales come in, hit the three sites, all the expenses, fees and credits, month to date, quarter to date, year to date. You know, if you made one mistake at the top, it just snowballed all the way down. Then you had to chase it down. I was spending hours managing this. Because I created it myself. I owned it. It was mine. It, I just hated it. I, I, I needed to fix this. I had to fix this. It was taking too much time away from what I wanted to do. And that was sell postcards. That's what I want to be good at. That's what I wanted to focus on. <clears throat> and that, I needed to fix this. So what needed to be fixed? So you have to identify what needs to be fixed what is broken that you think you need to fix you can't fix it all you have to pick and choose so i broke it down the number one is the complexity sure it worked but it was just too complex it was not supportable it was just too complex accuracy i was doing keeping up with the changes and stuff but was it accurate i always had double guessing because you created it yourself did you make a, a mistake somewhere I needed to reduce the time managing my financial data. I didn't want to spend, a, I'm not an accountant. I didn't, I want, I sell postcards. I want, I didn't want to sit there and do my figures all day. Automation, I, from my technical background, I know there's automation out there. What's out there? So I, that's where I focused a lot of was the automation. How was I going to automate what I'm doing manually? Handling site changes. eBay went to uh, manage payments. You know, there was fee changes. Etsy had some fee changes. Hip increase their fees, uh, stuff like that. My, I had to go in and adjust all those formulas and make sure I didn't miss any when they did that. Now, I wanted automation that did that for me. I wanted people working for me. I didn't want to do that anymore. Also, I added KPIs for monitoring progress. And what people don't know what KPIs are, key performance indicators. You know, the new eBay fee should be between 13 and 14%. 15 around there. So I put some KPIs into my spreadsheet that turns red, yellow, or green. If something's out of whack, it's going to turn red. It's going to keep my eyes in there. And I'm, then I go after and say, okay, where, why did something happen here? Did a number get transposed? So that's what key performance indicators. Not also I track, you know, example, how many sales dollars per day, but I also track the profit per day. I could sell $2,000 today but I only made $10. That doesn't make it. So I track, I try to bring the profit per day up along with the sales per day and using KPIs. How many cards am I selling today? How many cards across eBay, Etsy, and whatever? Those are key performance indicators. You want to increase, KPIs need to go up or stay steady. I wanted to add some forecasting and budgeting in. And then I wanted to add year-end tax data. I wanted to actually keep track of the data as I move forward to update the table, another tab on the spreadsheet, with my tax data. So at the end of the year, I didn't want to chase down all the numbers for the tax lady. Every morning, I run uh, what I ended up with. I run it. I make a few adjustments. I have my numbers. In five minutes, I can give my accountant what my numbers are 
year to date. And she could, you know, do the tax for me. So, and I know what number she needs after doing it all this time with her. <clears throat> so I, I, I'm, honestly, I, I can give her the tax anytime she wants. It only takes about five minutes to run and make sure it's right. So here's what I did to fix my monster, my Frankenstein. So I started with three sites. I know that's the core. I'm going to sell on three sites. I had to set, not Shopify, not all these other things, three sites. I, I, this is it for right now. This is where I wanted to be in 2021. eBay, Etsy, Hip Postcards. So I started with three sites. I said, what automation is out there for these three sites that can grab the data, do the entry like I was doing manually on there? So from doing toys and stuff like that before and selling on eBay all this time, I knew of one thing that talked to eBay and I really love. It's Easy Auction Tracker. Now, I, am, I do have an affiliate link in the description. Uh, if you do end up checking this out and buying it from them through that link the channel it does support the channel so I wanted to be upfront about that but I'm telling you if I even if I didn't have an affiliate I would actually promote easy auction tracker for the smaller resellers even bigger uh, resellers it grabs the data so easy auction tracker will be my is my automation pick for eBay it grabs the item info, info as you see here, the date sold, the quantity, title, SKU, sales tax collected, <coughs> the whole works. It grabs the buyer info, the name, the ID, the shipping info, what you charge for shipping, what the actual was, the tracking number, the date, everything's right there. And then the fees, you know, it, all that. Now, it actually grabs a file from eBay and it reads whatever eBay sends them. And they don't keep any of your data. You keep it on there. They don't have a server or anything. It's on your computer, so you have control of it. But they have a P&L sheet. They have an inventory tab if you want to put it on there. If you do, you can put how much you paid for something. It'll automatically put it in the cost of good when it sells a column on the selling sheet. Uh, it has a mileage tab. You can put mileage in. Uh, it, it has a chart. It just has all the data that you need, and we've been using it forever. And Josh, the support is another one. Support, Josh is and the team there, excellent. I send them something one or two days, it's back. You just send them an email, copy your spreadsheet on there, he fixes it. He made it, he fixes it. it. It's just, he knows exactly what to do. And so there is a link in the description to check that out. They have videos on how to do it. Uh, there is a charge for this software. You do need Excel. Um, I believe it does not run on a Mac, it only runs on a computer, but it has to be a computer that can run Windows, but they have all those details over there, so I won't get too much involved with it, but it does talk to eBay. Go go check out the link and go order and take that, check that out. <coughs> now, so I got eBay figured out, automation. What am I going to do about Etsy and HIP? So, Etsy, Auction Tractor doesn't work with Etsy, it works with... GoDaddy. Our auction tracker works with eBay. Etsy works with GoDaddy bookkeeping. So I went out and checked that out. <laughs> did the trial version. Did it for one month. Paid by month until I figured it out. It doesn't grab the cost of goods sold because it doesn't do an inventory sheet. Uh, you do have to put your expenses in what you shipped automatically. But for Etsy, it's only 15% of our sales. So I can handle that. But it does give you a nice report, a P&L report that I can grab the sales and the date and the expenses off of to put into my spreadsheet. <coughs> so that works like a charm. Now both of these we pay by the year. So there is a discount if you do it by the year. So for eBay, it's Easy Auction Tracker for automation. And then I picked Etsy, I picked GoDaddy Bookkeeping. Now there are some people out there commenting that they have issues with automation software and apps. Well, let me debunk that and what my opinion is. They have their opinion, I have my opinion. Yes, there is a cost to using the apps. Of course there is. They got a website, they got they built the software, they want to get paid for, they have support. <coughs> if it's good and they have support, I have no problem paying for it. These are all widely accepted apps in, in this area. GoDaddy is huge. Auction Tracker has been doing this over 12, 12 years. 
These are widely accepted and used applications. They have a large user base. If there's a problem with the app, you're going to see it on Facebook or in their forums or whatever. It's not just one or two people using these. There's a lot of people using these applications. You can spot check these apps. They say they might not be accurate. Well, they're a heck of a lot more accurate than me programming it. They have, you know, they're doing it every day. One of the best things about this is when eBay went to manage payments. Easy Auction Tracker took care of it. I didn't have to do anything. They grabbed the new data, they massage it, they put it in, they figured out the changes. Same with GoDaddy on Etsy. Etsy raised their fees on some things. It just comes right in. They just read the data from these companies. I didn't have to do anything. So I could keep focus on selling postcards. Downloading comma separate value files, CSV files, and uploading them. That's fine. I don't want to do that. My opinion uh, on automation. So, as you can see here, eBay, Easy Auction Tracker, Etsy, GoDaddy. What do I do with HIP? HIP is only 5% of my postcard sales. They do PayPal. GoDaddy Bookkeeping can connect to PayPal, but I didn't want to muck it up in there with the Etsy and stuff. So I decided I would just keep doing HIP manually. 5% of my sales, I can handle that data entry pretty, pretty straightforward. I tried it and it does work. Now, if HIP Postcards does increase to like 20% of my sales, then I'll have to go into GoDaddy and do something a little more automation. But right now, I can handle that volume um, doing manual data entry. So that's why I decided. E eBay and Etsy, I would automatically grab the information. HIP, I would do manually. So I created one spreadsheet. <coughs> After I get all the data, I just created one spreadsheet with workbooks and tabs. Not different spreadsheet that I had to open up and keep track of. Just one Excel work uh, spreadsheet with tabs, workbooks as they call them, in there. And then I would grab the data, and each, you know, Etsy, eBay, and HIP had their own tab. And I would just grab the data from those sites, Easy Auction Tracker, and I would put it in there. The things I needed for my information. I didn't try to copy Easy Auction Tracker. I just needed some pieces of it to put in there. And I, I made sure I was very conservative about the pieces I really needed. And then all that went into uh, combined spreadsheets for month, quarter date, year to date. I just basically had the same spreadsheet and I would just, I created some formulas. So the programming was cut by only an eighth of what I was doing. Very simple to do. I had checkpoint spots in there to make sure it's right. <clears throat> so, so the process ended up, instead of doing all that manual programming and keeping up with the spreadsheets and the changes, this is what I do every morning now. I run the apps, I enter the data into my spreadsheet, I review as adjust as needed. I'm done. I'm back to selling listing postcards. So, did I fix it? Let's take a look at my list. So, complexity, yes. It's not as complex. It's pretty straightforward now. Accuracy, yes. I got KPIs in place. Uh, the monitor, I do spot checks here and there, but I don't, you know, it doesn't assume all my time. Reduce the time of managing figures greatly. I'm done in five minutes after running the apps. It, that's how easy I've gotten it. Automation, greatly. <clears throat> Those two grabbing that data for me save so much time. Handling site changes, yes. They take care of all that for me. Add KPIs for monitoring, yes. I have a little graph charts that turn yellow, green, or red if they're out of my thresholds that I set in there. Add forecasting and budgeting on my spreadsheet. It's all integrated in. <clears throat> I took care of that. Uh, I added year end and tax data. I have a tab just for tax data. It grabs all the sales, all the expenses, puts them in the right buckets. I have to put a few numbers in that this data doesn't have, put my inventory in, and then it automatically calculates my tax in the estimate. So I could give that every mor I could give that every morning to my tax lady and she could file my taxes for me. So so I want so spend your time chasing numbers or spend your time what you want to do and that's sell postcards. Time is money. So I just reduce my financial time to maybe less than an eighth of what I was spending before. And that's by now did I spend a little bit more money for GoDaddy <coughs> and auction tracker? Yes. 
but it, it's worth every penny of it. In frustration, uh, questions if you're accurate or whatever like that. So that's how I, I, I did that. Again, check out Easy Auction Tracker for a uh, description for the link for that. Uh, GoDaddy link down there for bookkeeping. That's some automation stuff. And I hope this helps out someone. It was a struggle for when I started it. But this is how, like I said, the goal of this channel is to show you the journey we're doing to get to the point we're at. And this was one of the steps that I had to take to make my life easier uh, on there. So... But that's the exercise. But the next card that sold that was kind of a neat, another neat card is Howard Johnson's Motor Lodge. And this one big motor lodge, look how huge that thing is. It's got the two little insets there. This was posted in 1968. This is in Savannah, Georgia. So it's posted. But look at that thing. That's a huge uh, Howard Johnson's. And this actually sold for $4.45. I just listed this card this last week. And it's being shipped to Savannah, Georgia. This card that sold kind of caught my eye. I wasn't for sure what they meant. But if you look at there, there's a boat, there's a house. This is called Ditches and Homes, Tangler, Virginia. What it is, the description says, this is a typical Tangler, Virginia home where they have their private ditches or where they can bring their boats in. So that's what they mean about ditches. They have their private ditches. So, but that's a Chrome card. Uh, kind of flew away from me. Uh, unposted but ditches and homes so I had to stop and read that one I wasn't for sure what they meant by ditches and homes but this sold for 445 and it's being shipped to Capeville Virginia okay we'll do three more cards here then I'll talk about the postcard term of the day or of the video that I'll show you now the next card that sold was a high school I sell a lot of high schools and like I've said before and I preach and preach when you get a high school make sure you put the town uh, in there this is Libby High School, Toledo, Ohio. It's a white border card, uh, unposted, very good condition. Um, I, I really like white border cards. This card, actually, the title of it that I used was Postcard Libby High School, Toledo, Ohio. I just basically retyped what they had up here. High schools will sell if you get the key words into them. This sold for $4.45, and it's being uh, sent to Sylvania, Ohio. So I don't know how close that is to Toledo. But if you notice, it's an older school, and you can tell by the card. So probably 1920s, uh, 30s in there. But th that's a really nice... Okay, so the next order is two cards uh, Monica bought. Now, the only thing that really probably sold this card is the title and that little sign right there that says Route 60 says Route 66 on it uh, it's a picture of a road and a sign Route 66 it's unposted the title I use US Highway or postcard US Highway 66 desert country in the southwest I didn't put a state in there I didn't just put desert but what sold this card I bet is the word Route 66 and that little sign. So you want to look at details when you're dealing with Route 66. Now the other card that she uh, purchased was Houston, Texas at night. Now you want to make sure that you get like at night in the title sometimes just to differentiate what the cards are. But it's unposted chrome card. It's a dark card but it's got the lights in the background. Uh, the title for this one was Postcard Houston, Texas at night. So it had Houston, Texas and it had the night so if they get tied into the Houston there might not be a lot of at night scenes but this is a really nice card and both of these cards sold for 445 the total order was 845 and it's being shipped to Portland Oregon so <clears throat> we got about four more cards left but I'm gonna go ahead and talk about a term now, I wanted to start throwing terms in there because I'm learning as much as everyone else about some of these terms uh, to get more detail I've heard them but I wanted to learn a little bit more so uh, as I go through pulling out a term, it reinforces to me. But the term of, for this video is bird's eye. Bird's eye view term that often appears in various incarnations on postcards like bird's eye view of Detroit, Michigan, bird's eye view of Chicago, Illinois. It was traditionally used just to mean a view from a height. The term was more often applied to views captured from a tall structure that rose above the tree line the most common being a church belfry. So when you see uh, a view like I showed earlier, 
that says bird's eye view, make sure you get that into the title, bird's eye view, air view. Uh, those are terms that some collectors will search out as bird's eye view. And they said that they take them from a church belfry. Some of the pictures, that, that kind of makes sense to me that they are taken from a church belfry because I've said, how did they get that shot? They didn't have drones back in the 1920s, 1930s. Uh, how did they get so many shots? Did they put up a camera up on a balloon? Um, stuff like that. Or uh, how did they do that? So bird's eye view is a term that's used in the postcard world to say a view from a height above the tree line. So that's the term for the day. Let's go ahead and I'll do two more cards and then we'll do the short video to give you a sneak preview of uh, one that we haven't published yet but we do have completed. And the next card that sold was kind of a unique card that I, I, I probably could have priced up and sold, but you know I, I pass on if I buy the cards for more, then I'll pass on the cost. But this is a card from 1910. It's the interior of a bird, uh, bird cage at Lincoln Park Zoo, Chicago, Illinois. You know, that's the inside, that's the bird cage at the top. But it is posted 1910. It's a divided back. But it's a really nice card, but I did sell it for $4.45, and it is being shipped to Tulsa, Oklahoma. So this caught someone's eye, maybe Birdcage, maybe Interior, maybe Lincoln Park Zoo. A lot of people went to that zoo. But you want to make sure that you get those things in there. Now, I do this in every so often videos just so people know what I do in between. I'm not packing these things up as fast as the video is. What I'm doing is I'm showing you the card so you have a good variety to see what's out there. So when you go out looking for postcards, you know, what have I sold? Is this, would this sell? Whatever. But I'm also packing the cards up as we do this. I have pre-stamped and I put up my return address with an ink stamp. I put them in a new sleeve. I put them in these envelopes and then I stamp the back with there. I don't put any inserts or anything in there. I just stamp the back with SMPostcards.com which will take you right to the eBay store. So that's what I'm doing in between. And I put the address with the Dymo label right on the front here. The next card that sold is Lake Crescent and Olympic National Park. Nice blue color, chrome card, not posted. And this is actually down at the bottom here. Uh, it's the 76 gasoline. That might be what's helped sell this card. There's a whole series that people do collect those. I don't actively put those in my title. Um, there's a lot of them, but they sometimes don't fit in there. But maybe I should. That's something I'm going to look into. Maybe I'll do some searches on eBay to experiment with some cards and see what they do. But some people do actively look out uh, for those series from 76 gas stations. And this card sold for $4.45. And it's being shipped to Port Townsend, Washington. Only got two cards left to go through. But let, I'm going to go ahead and put up the short video. These are short videos that we're doing of past and present views of vintage postcards that we find. And then what we do is we own every card that we have the short videos for. And then we actually go out and find the buildings, find the site, and we take a picture of what it looks like today. So these are short 30-second video. This one is of the public library, circa 1940s, of the Moments Illinois Library. And as we took the picture, we noticed the original windows were still there. The columns are there. It's right next to my dentist office. Uh, I think it's on this side, um, where the dentist office is in moments. But everything is still there, and it kind of looks the same. They did do some custom windows in the front, some modern ones. But up at the top, you could still see the same windows. So I'm going to go ahead and kick off this video for you and hope you enjoy it. enjoyed that video and there'll be more in the future but you can look in our playlist for short postcard videos and you can play them all at once just hit on the playlist and they'll play you can see all the ones we got in there for less than five minutes right now but as it grows you're gonna see a lot of different scenes are really quick uh, and they're fun to do so let's go ahead and finish up the postcards I got here the next one is the old jail built 1805 Nantucket, Massachusetts. Um, this is a re repop card. 
to me, uh, it's on some stock that I, this is not a RPPC card, it's like a more of a higher rag count card, but it, it's been reproduced, it looks like postcard company, yeah. So, but that's the old jail in Nantucket, Massachusetts. It's unposted, and this sold for $5.45, and it's being shipped to Shoreline, Washington. And this is one of the cards uh, that I bought in an antique store or whatever, because I raised the price to $5.45, because I probably paid up for this card, and I have to pass that on when I do that. But as you can see, people will buy the cards uh, for that if you have to pass the cost on to, to keep your margins. This card that sold basically is Providence Waterfront Scene in Massachusetts. It's basically what it is. It's just some boats, waterfront. There was nothing special or detailed that I could find when I put that title there, but it's unposted. Just basically a chrome card in Massachusetts. Anytime you have boats and stuff like a scene, uh, those do normally do pretty well. This sold for $4.45. It's being shipped to uh, Shoreline, Washington as well. Okay, so this is the stack I got today for postcards that sold all on eBay. We didn't sell on Etsy or HIP, but it, that's approximately $80, $90 that I packed up right now for postcards. I hope you enjoyed the video, <clears throat> the financial exercise on tracking. If you got any questions on that, please send me a comment and I'll try to reply if I got the information or point you to the right direction. That is a big time saver. Uh, as how I put that together. And if anybody got other suggestions, let me know to save time on that type of stuff. And also the term bird's eye. So that's one thing you want to get in your title is bird's eye. I use it all the time. Collectors look for that. So we appreciate you watching. And in the future, we're going to have more exercises on things on our journey. And remember, the goal of this channel is if you're doing postcards, you're new, you've been doing it for a long time, hope you can get something out of it and we can share and trade. Uh, our knowledge back and forth. Thanks again, and we'll catch you on the next one.